When did you start a production company? <laughs> I started a production company straight out of college. Because I always knew, I always knew that I want to tell very specific stories and be part of building an industry and, and not just working for an industry. So, um, like literally in Australia, I was like, um, making African stories is not going to be a priority in an Australian market, so I have to, you know, register a production company. I didn't know what I was doing. It was, oh my gosh, it was, um, I, I think I made a few shorts here and there. They were not good. Um, I think there was always a kernel of something really special, but execution is a whole different thing, right? And I think I'd make the mistake of trying to do everything myself. Um, and it's a mistake, but also sometimes necessary, right? Like when you're starting out, like you might not have a lot of options, but also if you're trying to be a producer, you need to know how to bring people together and be clever about what the benefit of making stuff can be if you don't have a ton of money, right? So yeah, I think... Pff, maybe 18 years ago, um, that company is dead, it's gone. Um, then when I moved to Austra uh, South Africa, because uh, I was in Australia for five years, I did college for three, worked for another two, then moved to South Africa. And then, so that was maybe 15 years ago. Um, then I started another company and I did a bunch of plays with that, with that company. Um, and then I was now learning, oh yeah, starting a production company isn't just about making stuff. You gotta do taxes and like <laughs> all of that other stuff. Um, and then, yeah, I think I got an accountant for the first time and my accounts were just a mess. And then we decided to just wrap up that company and then I started a new one. So Ndiani Studios is the one that I think I've had going for like seven years. Um, and because I've always had a day job, because you know, when you're an immigrant, because I was always moving, being an entrepreneur isn't always the most secure option when you're not from a place. Um, so I always had a day job. So I, this production company was to slowly start building my own work so that eventually I could do that full time. So I think I've had it for about seven years now and I feel like I'm starting to get a handle on, on how to run it and fundraise for it and report and all that stuff. So with the day job and trying to do the production company, do you just do stuff on the weekends or even then it might just still be too you know, overwhelming? Um, no. So I would take time off. Jeez, like I think I can count the number of actual vacations I've taken. You know, like when work breaks and goes, okay, you've got two weeks for the Christmas period or I'd be shooting something. I'm like, I got two weeks? Yes, I'm going to like make something. So it was a combination of like any public holiday I had, uh, I think in Britain they call them bank holidays or <clears throat> vacation. I use all my vacation time after work or I'll write around my work day. I'm like, okay, we can shoot at night. Um, I'll, I'll finish work at five and we start shooting from eight to ten. I hustled. I just was like, whatever pockets of time I can use. Um, but I'm also kind of, I think I'm a high, I'm a high productive person. Like I think I need, I do this thing where I like go, 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 then crash. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do that um, and then my body goes whoop and then I might get a cold or something and then I have to stop but yeah just whatever spare time I'd get um, uh, I, that's that's kind of how I've always done it really well I guess what I'm curious about is what did you learn uh, with the third time mm. to do right uh, for the production company from two prior companies yeah what you know what the biggest lesson was the creative needs a strong spine that you can't, I don't know if you can truly tell the stories that you want to tell if the systems around you are weak. So I knew that um, having a company that has its finances in order or just its systems in order, like make sure that I do my reporting every year. I think it's the IRS here, right? Just make sure you, all of that is clean. Um, in South Africa, it's SARS, which is our re tax revenue collection company. Um, do I have an accountant? Do I have a lawyer? Just like, just the back of it, just making sure that that's robust. You've always got someone who can help you with those things and it doesn't always have to be you. I also learned that I need to know enough about everything just to kind of, just a little bit, not, not be an expert, but just have a global understanding of like from start to end. So from the fundraising and the pitch stuff, which is what I got out of my MBA where it's like, got to learn how to bring different partners in and stakeholders that's like very MBA businessy language right every stakeholder has a different thing that they want so you as a company how are you communicating to each stakeholder 
Because sometimes we're pitching ideas and we're trying to meet people with our creative and you go, oh, I want to tell this vampire story and it's so cool and it's the first of its kind. They don't care. They're just like, how much am I going to make out of this? And is it more than leaving my money in an interest account or whatever? So knowing how to have that conversation um, is super important. So I think the third time was just like, as a business, if you are making films, even if you're making pots or water or fans, as a business, does your story make sense as a business? And then, if it makes sense as a business, am I profitable, am I self-sustainable? Then we could talk about the product, right? How are you doing that with the product? So I had to put the the, the business hat on, um, and I think when I started to do that, I was actually better able to make decisions around, okay, what should I be making? Is this worth making now? Is this, if we do a cooking show now, oh, there are a lot of cooking shows, is that a waste of our time? Should we be using our resources to make a children's show, for example, because there's a shortage of children's shows. So um, just learning to look at it the Hollywood way, I guess. Um, I think I was doing that unconsciously when I did it the third time. Yeah. That's interesting. Is there, is there, let's say, an African way? And I'm sure there's different ones. Zimbabwe versus South Africa versus New York, California. Is, is there, do you see different mindsets when it comes to entertainment? Or it's all well, the same? I think it's pretty similar. I think the, the only thing that is different, and that was also a big lesson when I moved to LA, was like, oh, it's pretty similar. Like, the, the way you're making decisions, whether it's running a production or making a business case for a show, it's the same filters. It's the same processes, right? Because filmmaking is a process. You do this and then this and then this. The difference is on set. It's the, cu the culture, the interpersonal stuff. So here's something fun for me. I did my training, I did my film school in Australia. So in Australia, gender, genders are kind of on par. So I'll pick up you know, the, the tripod, I will, doesn't matter, just everybody help out, like just let's go, right? My first job on a reality TV show in South Africa, I was, I was a director on that. I'm like picking up the, the crew was angry with me. They were like, lady, why, excuse me, ma'am, why are you picking up the tripod? And I used to get offended. I'm like, it's, you know, equal genders, blah, blah, blah. And then a line producer, a South African line producer was like, no, no, no. Um, they, they like helping you. And, and, and I'm not saying it's like that now. This was a while ago, but it was like, they see you as their sister first before they see you as a colleague. So they wouldn't be letting their sister carry heavy gear. So just back off because you're actually pissing them off. Um, so the, just those little like <laughs> interpersonal thing, um, things um, of just like like what we're talking about um, in, in, in LA. There's subtext and conversation. So you just learn learning how to like the interpersonal is the only difference. Um, and then here I've noticed um, when people give notes, they're not always direct. Uh, we're very uh, flowery sometimes, um, whereas in South Africa, you've got to have a backbone because people will tell you straight away, like, that's not working. Um, and, you know, there's none of that, like, what I like about this is, and, you know, um, so, yeah, I think it's mainly the interpersonal. That's the difference um, that I've observed. And I wonder, too, in New York, would it be different because East Coast tends to be a little more direct, uh, direct whereas yeah. California, it's definitely about softening yeah. And talking around things. I mean, having grown up here most of my life, yeah. I'm just used to it. But yeah, it's... But I, what, I, what I will say is there's something beautiful about it. Because I think when you... I, I'm seeing value in being kind. Um, because sometimes what we do is hard. And I think that's what's beneath it sometimes. Where it's like, I appreciate how hard... Even though this thing might not be working... A lot of energy went into this. I'm hoping that's the spirit of it, right? So I want to respect that. And then as kindly as I can, here's the note. Because sometimes I think when you're too direct, you, you might not honor all the work that's gone into something sometimes, if you know what I mean. So I, I, I welcome it. I, I do. I mean, I, I've tried to find a middle ground of going, how can you be direct and kind versus kind, but no one actually understands what the note is by the end of the conversation. You know, one thing that's interesting is a lot of times uh, California people end everything in a question sound, <laughs> and sometimes that softens it. I realize that's like a passive-aggressive way, but it, it, there is something to that, especially different parts of California, maybe beach communities or whatever. It's very much, 
you say it, but it, you're actually your inflection is like a question. <laughs> so anyway, that's just, I love it. <laughs> Um, but that's so interesting to, mm -hmm. to hear just about the different rules, like unspoken things on set yeah. that normally maybe one wouldn't know. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. What advice do you have for filmmakers who are just starting out and they want to get a production company off the ground? Maybe they don't have a lot of money and they don't really know where to look for assembling a team. I love that question. I think we get in our heads too much. I, I'm a big fan of start with what you have. Whatever you have is plenty, um, and you build on that, um, and it's necessary. I think it's like every little small thing that you're doing, you're learning something that feeds into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And, and I think I got my, my animation job because of all my side hustle things. I didn't get my, I mean, fine, like all the broadcast stuff uh, helped, but I was doing my MBA on my own and self-financing that. Um, and I did every freelance job from like um, voice, voice acting and all sorts of things. And I'd put the money into the production company to make a thing. So I learned how to make a thing, like a short thing. And I say this to people that work in animation as well, that are like, oh, you worked on this big animated project or Burns and Song, which is our pilot, right? Oh, and you finished like a whole 30 minute pilot by yourself. And how do I do something like that? I'm like, start with a two minute short, just so you know how to, finish a thing and know without like overwhelming yourself. So learn how to raise the money for it, how to talk about it, how to run a crew, how to manage edit, like finish a process and then you do more and then you do more and then you learn to trust yourself and then business people learn to trust you. So big fan of just start with whatever you have, it's enough. And then you continue to build on that. And did I hear you say previously that you like to just sometimes shoot one scene of something just to test it or? Um, yeah, um, I've, I've done that a, a lot. Like, um, I, yeah, actually the the first web series I did, I, I think that's what kind of made me feel like my Diani Studios was a real company now. I was like, oh, yay. Um, I remember reading, um, my friend used to write these comedic blogs on Facebook. Um, and then she wrote just a conversation she'd overheard at the airport, which I found hilarious because as I was reading it, I was laughing out loud and I was like, Wait, that's a sketch. Because like one scene can be a sketch, right? In a sketch comedy show or whatever. So I'm like, that's a sketch and it's really funny. And I literally just took a camera and got my two friends. I kind of told them, I kind of pitched them what was going on and I asked them to improvise the scene. And in an hour, we, we filmed this dialogue. I posted it and in a day we had 13,000 views and it was just one scene. And that scene got me development money to actually develop a series idea based on that thing. So I was able to write 13 episodes because I was able to go, hey, here's a scene that I shot. Here's a social media audience that got it. There's a show here. And I was able to unlock development money. Then I was actually able to raise production money. And I actually made a web series that got bought by a streamer in South Africa. That was my first show that I produced from beginning to end that got bought by a serious you know, streamer. And for context, it, it, the stream is called Showmax. For context, Showmax has more subscriptions in Africa than Netflix. So that's like for context. So my show <laughs> that started off as a scene got, you know, the one thing we did, I think it was like eight minutes, became a 13 episode web series that was on Showmax. And then doing that show, I think, helped me get into animation, which then helped me come to the US. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I do whatever I can. Um, makes a difference, I think.